We're at about the halfway point through the eight days of Passover, when observant Jews give up things like bread, rice, corn, pasta, pizza, beer, whiskey, and vinegar, just to name a few. Most folks don't go hungry during the holiday, of course. Matzah may be unleavened, but it's hardly unfilling. But there are plenty of people in this city who, far too much of the time, don't have enough to eat, including some Jews, which is why someone like our next guest does what he does. Alexander Rappaport is the ex executive director of Mosbia Soup Kitchen Network, which serves more than two million meals a year. Thank you for joining us in the studio today. Thank you for having me. First of all, can you just tell me, do you guys do a Seder at Mosbia? Yes, this is the second year we actually did a Seder is two days, so mm -hmm. two nights, so we actually did it the second year. Wow, how did it go? It went very well, we had uh, hired a rabbi to do the Seder part, and we hired a, um, a singer to do a little bit of the songs, oh, wow. and then there was staff there till late at night, kind of serving everybody. And like all the time, we we had staff and volunteer serve lots of guests who, mm -hmm. up to the last minute, hoped to be invited to other people's Seder, right. but in the last minute weren't invited and ended up coming to a soup kitchen for a Seder. Oh, wow. That's like really lovely for you guys to have that for people to engage in. I, re I really, really love that idea. That's it. Like, Passover is a holiday that, you know, as we just mentioned, you give a lot of things up, including full food. How does that gel with the mission of a soup kitchen? <laughs> Right, so, and, and what happens is throughout the year, from whatever we do, Passover is about 20% of all the food we do. Wow. Because there's so many people, when it comes to a holiday, that find themselves on a tighter budget than all year round. Right. The kids are home from school, it means breakfast and lunch that you got from school, you now take from your own budget. Right. The, the idea that there's other things that the holiday requires makes the cost the, oh, yeah. the, the budget of the family go up, and that puts strain on food, mm -hmm. plus the fact that you'd like to do nice holiday meals, right. and that makes our lines go 300%. Wow, 300%? Well, you guys have seen a lot of growth from, you know, what I read. When you guys started, you were doing about 160-plus meals a week, and now you're up to 2,000 a week. Like, what does that do for an organization to have that much usage? Yes, so, so it definitely takes it takes a toll even on the walls of the, of the places we rent. I mean, right. everything, just the... the 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 volume just oh, yeah. just it takes wear and tear and everything mm -hmm. but we have lots of volunteers we have a pool of a couple of thousand volunteers we have lots of donors who help us get the food out there and yes we went from the first night serving eight people wow. to now serving thousands of people wow. every week and families, we so we there's a difference between the sit-in meal mm -hmm. and the meals people take home, packages of raw food that they could make at home, right. and the huge increases a lot in where the mothers come and pick up a package that they could serve their children at home. Oh, wow. That sort of and, and over there is where we are able to give just lots of fresh produce, a little bit of chicken or fish, and things like that that right. people can make meals at home. Oh, I love that. I absolutely love Talk to me a little bit more about your volunteers. You guys have so many. What are they like? So what, what's the, nice about must be, I like to say, we happen to be kosher, but mm -hmm. we have volunteers from all walks of life. We have our, our clients are, from, are very diverse. So it's kind of a real Brooklyn thing. Yeah. It's, it's a, so we have two locations in Brooklyn, one in Queens, mm -hmm. and we have we use about a thousand hours of volunteers a week, wow. and then there is the you know the minimal s staff that we need to have mm -hmm. a little bit in the office, a little bit in the kitchen, and a little bit of the sites, right. and the there's enormous amount of food and a, and a slow week we put in and out fifty thousand pounds of food in a slow uh, week yeah. fifty thousand pounds uh, yes wow that is just so much 
work, which makes me think, you know, and I used to work in nonprofits. That's actually my background. That's some of the first work when I went into um, the working world. That was some of the first places that I worked were in soup kitchens and homeless shelters and things like that. And one of the things that I know to be true, but I know a lot of other people don't necessarily realize all the time, is that a soup kitchen does not just need donations of food. There are a lot of things that go into making an organization work, a nonprofit org, no matter what they're putting back out there. Um, what are some of the resources that you guys, I think, or I guess, just need in general? Yes, yeah, so it's a very interesting point. You spoke about the Seder. Mm -hmm. Now, if the Seder happened to be happened on the weekend, right? It was Saturday, um, Friday night and Saturday night. Mm -hmm. So imagine just the staff keeping them up till late at night, mm -hmm. you know, just, and, it's, and it's to some of them it's their own holiday, right? Right. So just being fair to them means paying them for what it is to be there on a holiday. Mm -hmm. But then there is we pay we pay rent. We actually buy a lot of food. Wow. We we pay the staff. We pay rent, and there is a lot of what's called in order to give people with dignity. It's very easy to give some cheap food and, right. and, and get away with it, so to speak. But if you want right. to give people food that brings them, gives them that half hour of dignity where they're giving fresh, delicious, nutritious food served in a way that gives them their dignity, it, it, it's, it doesn't boil down to wow. food only. Well. I think people will listen to this and want to help out. Sounds like you guys have a fantastic mission. Thank you so much for being here today. I really appreciate it. Thank you for having me. Thank you.